All right. Hello and welcome just to family. This is giving you something to talk about or just to type, just a live TV as I like to call it. Apparently I can't talk today. Um, I'm your host, Melissa Kretschler. Today we're talking about boudoir, the art of sensuality. Um, what boudoir showed us, shows us about ourselves and how we can look and feel sexy and sensual for ourselves, because who doesn't want to feel that way about ourselves? Um, our sponsor today, Phoenix Identity, love yourself in your own skin. You deserve to feel great about every part of yourself. Find out how to unconditionally love and express yourself with a Phoenix Identity. Book a clarity session today. Uh, they are free. Go and check out that link in the description. I'm going to hand it over to our guest speaker today. Tanya, would you like to introduce yourself? Thank you, Melissa. Yes, my name is Tanya Metaxa, and I am the owner of um, Tanya Yavin Photography and House of Secrets Boudoir in beautiful Austin, Texas. Um, my studio shoots uh, fine art portraits, branding, and of course, boudoir for all genres. I love it. So you and I were talking about boudoir and the different, that boudoir is for everybody. And yes. It's it's so important to understand that like you don't see as often men or couples going to boudoir sessions and getting those, you know, just encapsulating or, or containing those emotions and that really just that essence of what boudoir is supposed to be. So what do you think boudoir or can you educate me <laughs> what boudoir actually is? So um, I believe that, you know, when we hear the, the word boudoir, the first thing would probably, that would probably come to mind uh, would be a picture out of a Playboy magazine, for example. But um, that is not exactly what boudoir in real life is. So yes, while we um, portray and capture the sensuality and sexuality it it is also just a great way to learn more about um ourselves what our body is like um what our to learn to love our body through a session because eventually you know when you do a session like um as intimate as boudoir you um you get a glimpse of um what you look like through the lens of the camera and it, it is not necessarily always or shall I say for the most part it, it it's not exactly what we imagine when we ourselves look in the mirror every day so we get to really learn um who we are what our body is like and um learn to love it just the way it is I think that most of us have that that feeling, right? Um, I'm looking for a picture, which is why I'm looking at my phone. I'm not ignoring. Uh, I do have a picture that goes hand in hand with this, and I found it. Um, a few years ago, I had a painting done. And when I sent over the picture of the painting, I said, I want this 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 painting to embody passion and embody um my my essence and so I had this painting done um and I'm trying to let everybody see it without it being um all done but that's me and it was done through painting so it was almost like a boudoir painting and when I look at that I I get this just this this feeling this passion this the the sensuality come over me where I feel good about myself and I'm like that's me and we get this kind of preconceived notion of of who we are right and what we look like you look I look in the mirror I was playing with snapchat today um I was at the doctor's office and I was playing with snapchat because I love their filters uh but again the filter and I'm looking at the filter and I'm looking at me without the filter and I, even on here even when we do this I kind of have the zoom feature where it's like oh we'll touch up your features so I even have that <laughs> like on here right mm -hmm. but I have rosacea I don't have the whitest teeth um I have like the the little fat here because I'm a little I'm overweight and you can look at yourself in the mirror and you can see just those things and we tend to do that we tend to just see the things that we don't like 
or we tend to see what everybody else says, right? We get everybody's voice in our head going, oh, you should really lose weight or, oh, you should really whiten your teeth or, oh, you should really find cream for that. Or, you know, if you have acne or, or whatever, there's always going to be things that we don't like about ourselves, but we can wholeheartedly love ourselves. And I think that's what boudoir might capture is the ability to love ourselves, right? It's it's looking at ourselves in a different light, in a different angle, in a different state of being where, you know, I've talked to quite a few boudoir photographers and in that essence, they're like, I see you differently. I see you as you are. I see the beauty in you and the sensuality in you and the, the, the artwork of your photos, they, it captures that. And I think that we miss that in our own head. So having a, a boudoir session done or having a painting done or whatever that looks like, it captures what you don't see yourself. That is exactly right. I feel that, you know, we are uh, throughout, throughout our entire life, we're just too hard on ourselves. And there, is, there, there are a lot of reasons for that starting from, you know, um, problems in, in uh, middle school or high school, and then throughout the life, um, I feel like, you know, the society always finds flaws in us, and um, the, the worst parts of us that they kind of bring to the surface and, and shove in our faces. And it's always there, whatever we do, um, being out with friends or going to work, you know. So yes, that that um, little voice it, it just planted in our head, and it plays twenty four seven, never stops. How how we should be more this and less this, and what we should do, uh, supposedly to change ourselves. And there is very little hope, like where do we go? What outlets do we have to actually look deep into ourselves and see that this is not what we are? And this is not the version that the society paints of us, you know, that there is absolutely different version of us that we just don't get to see of ourselves. And that's where uh, boudoir session comes to rescue, because that is exactly, as you said, that is exactly what it does. It brings to the surface the the completely uh, different version of you that is true version that is seen through, first of all, through the lens of the camera. And then you can see it with your own eyes, as opposed to imagining every little uh, harsh and bad thing that the society is about to tell about you or or told you before or whatever notions, you know, you have in your head about about being not what is expected of you. Uh, in a boudoir session, there is nothing really expected of you. Just, just be able to open up, be yourself, and see the beauty of you through the lens. And lens, uh, lens is so true to what your loved ones are seeing. It's the same version of you that they get to see, but you don't, unfortunately. Yeah. And another thing that we do is as soon as, if you take a picture, anybody, if you take a picture, the first thing you do when you look at that picture is you're, you're not scanning and saying, oh, I like that picture. You're looking at that picture going, oh, I don't like that. I don't like that. You're, we automatically, and I mean automatically, like there's no thought process. It's just, we automatically mm -hmm. look for what we don't like. We automatically right. look for the faults or the, you know, the, the blemishes or anything that would make it so that we feel uncomfortable, right? And I almost think that it's it's more comfortable to look for that than it is to go, oh, wow, I look pretty. Because if you look at a photo and you say, oh, I love that. I look sexy and I look hot and I'm, you know, I, I really enjoy it then it's, oh, I'm conceited or, oh, I'm not being humble or I'm not being modest. Or, yes. you know, um, if a little girl walks out in front of her family and she's strutting because she feels really good in a pretty dress or whatever she's wearing, I'm stereotyping here, so I apologize. But if she or he walks out and they feel beautiful, it's like, oh, you look good. But, you know, don't, don't, don't rub it in everybody's faces. Again, 
we are unintentionally, and I say this with love, we are unintentionally taught to look for the faults. We are unintentionally taught to hide our our confidence, our self-love, our, you know, everything, just quiet down or, you know, don't be too loud. You were talking about high school and uh, and middle school and how, we're, we, you know, it comes into play then. It actually comes into play in like preschool. Um, right. If you think about it, I, I had this whole thing. Um, I was going to do a series on on just a lot of the things that were taught. And one of them is coloring in between the lines. We're taught that we have to color in between the lines. And my question is why? Why do we have to color between the lines? Because it needs to be perfect, because we have to be the same as everybody else. We can't change the design. Why can't we color outside the lines and make that line a bit bigger or a little bit smaller or however we wanna play it? Why do we have to cut? Like, we're taught perfection. We're taught conformity. You're we're right. taught that we have to be like everybody else. You know, in Marilyn Monroe, she was gorgeous. She wasn't a zero. She was gorgeous. And at the time, she was the epitome of beauty. You know, you look at Queen Victoria from way long ago, and she was the epitome of beauty. And she wasn't thin. She was overweight. She, you know, she had nine kids. <laughs> and then you have, you know, Cleopatra, who is embodied in this beautiful, beautiful. Um, and she was beautiful, but she wasn't today's standard of beautiful. And it's constantly changing. And I think that I love the art of sensuality. I love boudoir while I haven't had anything other than that, that uh, piece of art. But at the same time, I love the thought about it. I love to be able to show people that you are smarter, you are bolder, you are more beautiful than you could ever imagine. And that shows when you express that. That shows when you embrace it and embody it and say, this is me. I know if I walk down the street and I'm smiling, I draw people's attention. We went for dinner the other day and um, everybody smiled at me. I went out. I was like, it was my idea. I was like, let's go out. We haven't been out to a restaurant, like an actual restaurant to sit down to eat in years. And so we went to a restaurant. We went and sat down with the kids and my mother-in-law and everybody's walking by and the waitresses and I'm just sitting there. I'm like this, right? Like I'm just, I'm sitting there like this and everybody who walked by, they would always talk to me. They would, you know, uh, they would smile as they walked by and it was just a very good experience. And I felt great. I felt great. And everybody around me saw that I felt great and they right. gravitated towards me and they gravitated towards feeling great themselves. Right. That's, that's, I think, what we need to strive for is feeling great, first of all, for ourselves, but also then sure. for other people and help other people feel great. And it, it's it's an interesting uh, experience. You are absolutely right. And and you're also right, right pointing out that um, even something like, like a boudoir experience, it, it is supposed to be, first of all, for ourselves. And only then just as an additional bonus you know it can be a gift for someone else as opposed to start thinking about it and booking a session as a gift for someone which is understandable but you know very soon people do understand during the session it, not even at the end of the session during the session they realize that they're doing it for themselves actually so yes because that is something that make them feel uh, good that make them feel powerful and confident just as the experience you described which was a completely different sort of experience but nevertheless you felt the same way right you felt happy about attracting um everyone's positive comments about feeling good just sitting there and smiling right that's that's what boudoir also does for you exactly and you mentioned Marilyn Monroe and we just recently discussed that in my um boudoir facebook group with other women uh, one of her um saying where she mentioned that she did not want to fool anyone she she was just 
herself while other people perceived her completely different. So it wasn't her fault that they seen someone else in her that she wasn't, you know? And that is exactly what happens a lot of times that someone else sees as, or even, you know, um, society sees us with one set of eyes uh, and we are completely different from whatever society wants or does not want to see in us, you know? Yes. I think energetically too, when you have a photo taken and you're enjoying the moment and you're just being, and you're, you're in that, that, that mode, right. Of just being and, and having a great time. My, uh, we talk about couples boudoir as well, because that is, that is a thing it's for everybody who knows that is a thing. <laughs> um, my favorite photo of my husband and I are, is from our wedding. We weren't posing for the photo. Um, we, so this is my wedding. <laughs> we weren't posing for the photo. This was literally just after we had gotten married. We're standing, you know, it, where we got married and we're just looking at each other and we're so happy. We're so in the moment. That is ultimately my favorite, favorite photo of my husband and I, because we were just in that moment. And it was the beauty of, we didn't care what was going on around us. We didn't care who was there. We were just into each other at that point. And that's another thing that boudoir does. And specifically, not just boudoir, but boudoir pho photographers, you make them go into that moment and just enjoy it and relax and have fun and just feel into it. And if we could do that every day, as individuals, just learn how to just feel into our bodies and feel into whatever emotion we can create. And, I, and I'm an emotional and mental health expert, okay? We can recreate or create any emotion we put our mind to. I can literally sit here right now and create any emotion that I want any emotion. I can create rage. I can create, I could literally sit here. And if I work my brain, no, literally work my brain and not move, I could probably create a reaction in my body to something. I'm not going to go into what, but we're going to talk about <laughs> you know, O's and shit like that. But whatever you can create any emotion. So if you learn how to do that and just embody that emotion you can create confidence you can create sensuality you can create whatever emotion or feeling you want mm -hmm. just by using your mind getting everything like clear everything else out right quiet yes. all the noise and just be within yourself you are absolutely right and that is exactly what we are doing during the session because you know i do not believe in in expressing or trying to express the emotions that you do not presently feel because mm -hmm. it, it does not look natural it just does not look right you know when you look at the in these pictures like, everything right, feels like, very forced yeah. and it's not the experience it's not the results you want to see from your session so in order to actually feel these emotions and the thing is when you revisit your images you feel exactly the same feeling that you were feeling at the moment that this picture was taken of you. So in order to get there, we do actually need to help you to get into this emotion. And that is what we are doing during the session. We do not fake, we do not create. We uh, just create a condition where you can freely, you know, go in there and stay there for some time and um, let me capture that before we go into a different state, into a different emotion. But it's still going to be something that you're going to naturally feel at that moment. Mm -hmm. Nothing forced, nothing just, uh, you know, fake. Yeah, exactly. Um, and that's that's a sign of a good photographer when they can make you feel genuinely how you want to feel. Like if you're getting work photos done and you're having a blast, that shows in the photos, right? I, I don't like photos, <laughs> never have, um, but that's who I am, right? I, I feel awkward having pictures taken, um, but again, 
if I actually took that into practice, because I haven't, I always question how I look and I feel awkward. Um, but if I ever did that, and I will be in the future because I need professional yes. folks. Um, <laughs> you just have to try it. And then you'll yeah. see that it's not it's not what you think. It, it's not what you imagine yeah. how that's going to work. You know, it's it's way simpler than you may think about it. So is there anything you feel that people should know about boudoir or even the art of sensuality that maybe is not being talked about or that would help them in that process? Uh, first of all, I want to bring back the uh, something that you mentioned that um, everyone used to think that boudoir is very, you know, um, women's um kind of of you know uh visual art and it is not it is um as you mentioned it is for any gender and we do welcome uh in the studio every gender everyone who wants to really truly um go into uh learning more about themselves and maybe being able to bring out some features and some feelings that they were afraid of showing and you know in again going back to the uh, societal conditioning uh, we are always taught that men is supposed to be strong they supposed to be breadwinners they supposed to you know um, support everyone else and ne never show um, any any signs of softness or something that would be uh, viewed as um less of um some sort of i don't know qualities that they should have as men and that is absolutely no not true so we give that power back to them we give them the opportunity and just like everybody else you know no matter the gender come into the studio play explore and um, experiment and see where do they want to take it, what side of themselves they really want to see and bring out and um, remember going forward that they do have those qualities and whatever, whoever told them or taught them that these are bad qualities to have or, or qualities that they should, you know, try to, um, to get out of their system, it's absolutely not true. And it is just the natural state of themselves that they don't get again to see or explore or even talk about in real life. And it's really sad. So we invite here everyone to come in and have that sort of exploration session, sort of uh, learning experience, because there's a lot of learning going into that session as far as who we are and what we are and the way we uh, really want to to be known for you know by the people who love us by our friends but by everyone else without being afraid to showing those sides yeah um I throw it out there I'm I've been happily married for 15 years and sometimes the sexiest I've ever found my husband is when he's taking care of the kids when he's truly listening to me when he's you know, sleeping with a baby in his arms. What, you know, just the very softness of him. And there are times, absolutely, I want the hard ass. That's part of my language. I want the hard man that's, you know, sexy as hell. But there are so many different facets to everybody. Yes. How many men have said they love to see a woman who rocks and sweats, right? Like, it, there are so many different aspects to who you are as an and as an individual being able exactly. to express that um i like to think that boudoir is a way for you to express that and learn how to express it when when you can see yourself in a different light and you can say that's really me that's that's really me that's really who i am a lot of the unhappiness that we face in society today is our inability to, you know, embrace who we are and express who we are. And that creates a lot of fear, a lot of anxiety, a lot of just very hard 
communication even. Right. Um, and so our identities get skewed and your identity yes. isn't just what you look like. It's how you feel. It's what you believe. It's what you love and what you hate. It's what you, you know, what you're good at and what maybe you're not as good at and how you can utilize all of those things to build that expression, to exactly. build that identity and say, this is me. Mm -hmm. um, and it's huge, right? And yes. there are people all over the world. Everybody likes somebody different. Everybody likes something different. Everybody finds different aspects of a person sexy and, you know, sensual and attractive. And it's going to change for everybody. So, you know, learn to love who you are the way that you are. And absolutely really are. That's that's the key there. All right. Um I have nothing else to add. So, and, and I've asked you, is there anything else you'd like to add before we get going here? So the last thing I, sh I wanted to mention is, you know, uh, I am always being asked if there's a key word that, that is the most important when we talk about boudoir. And you already mentioned that actually, that key word would be confidence. Yes, that is the first and foremost, that's the most important thing that you gain through a boudoir session. And it doesn't matter if you uh, feel like you lost it, you've never had it, or um, whatever you think about it, you know, you may think uh, of yourself as a failure because you did not, you know, um, you did not comply with whatever requirements are thrown your way, whatever it is you are coming in for a session, you live with that confidence. And this is not just a one day event. It's basically it can be a beginning of your journey. It can be a celebration of, celebration of the middle of your journey or, you know, coming out of the, on the other side at the end of your journey. But this confidence will stay with you. It does not go anywhere. And those pictures will always remind you that you've got this, you have it. Yep. Gives you the ability to tap into those emotions. And exactly. Whenever you need a slight reminder that it's there and it did not go anywhere, it stays. All right. Well, if anybody would like to learn more about boudoir, please go and check out Tanya. Uh, her links are in the description of this episode. So go and check her Thank out. You um, and make sure that you connect. You're very welcome. Um, and Tanya, thank you for joining me today. I have really enjoyed this episode. Thank you very much. I was glad to be able to be there and to chat with you today. Sounds good. All right. Well, if anybody's wondering, again, like I said, if you want to connect with either myself or Tanya, do so. Our links are in the description of this episode. The Phoenix Identity. If you want to truly learn who you are, what you love, and start building that unconditional love and confidence within yourself, go and check them out. Set up a clarity session um, today. And I'm Melissa Kretschler. I'm your host. I will see all of you on the next episode. Lots of love. Thank you again, Tanya, for everybody.